So the second part of an Alexander Technique lesson will often, but not always, I hasten to add, uh, involve what we call a table turn, uh, which is basically lying down. It's a, like a treat because you've worked so hard. So here is the table. Here is the turn. Here is the turn. <laughs> so Chris, so you park your middle on the middle there. So I'm going to guide you backwards. I'm going to put your hood up. Right on my ears, like that. You might want to shift your bottom forward a little bit. <laughs> Which is definition of okay. forward? Or Towards the window. Right. Okay, just so we land your head on these books. <clears throat> yeah? Okay. So we're starting with, so normally, Normally we avoid hoods. hoods. I don't mind. Some teachers say, oh, no hoods. But I know Chris usually wears a hood, so I use it to, to the advantage. But normally I would like to be able to reach your neck muscles under here. So we put your head on some books and he's got his feet up. So the knees are pointing upwards. That's good. I'll explain about that when we get there. So we use hard books, so paperback books or hardback books if you can't find any. Um, and the number of books will depend very much on the person and the, and the lesson. The idea is that your head is not being pushed forwards or backwards. But saying that, I think I might take a book away. Don't take Rousseau away, I like that one. Oh, well, I'll take uh, Walden away. I like Walden. Yeah, don't take me yeah. Rousseau can stay sometimes. You might learn something through osmosis. No, that's a joke. At school, we use Reader's Digests. <laughs> if you have any Reader's Digests, send them our way. That feels a bit better to me. So again, like all lessons, all teaching, I'm using my hands gently. This isn't massage, this is just guiding, encouraging. So your head, Chris, is on the books. Yourself is on the table. I remember one lesson in my early days where I was so frazzled when I turned up that Tim just said, do you want to just get straight on the table? Sometimes that's what it takes. Because there is no point working on doing more things to counteract what you think the problem is if you're not stopping the things that are causing the problem. So this is your chance to relax. I've got some non-slip material, as you might find in any good tour bus or under any good rug. <laughs> it's to stop your feet slipping away. Because if you feel that as if they're slipping away, it's going to make you tense. So you'll see that when you come for a lesson, you know, you might feel more comfortable in trousers and long sleeves, but I have had people turn up in shorts. That's okay. It's your personal preference. You don't want any kind of clothing that's going to make you feel inhibited or uncomfortable. Socks are good as well. I'm just going to rearrange this leg slightly. We Alexander teachers really appreciate a good pair of socks. Yeah, so eyes, eyes stay open because this is a conscious rest. Always clear to point out, if you really need a rest, then have a nap. Um, you know, go to bed, get the duvet over you. You can put a pillow under your knees. That's a really nice thing to do. Lie on, lie on your back. Put a pillow under your knees. It just takes the pressure off your lower back. If Chris's legs were flat, then his back could well kind of pop up. The lower back could pop up. But the idea of this is to get the spine nice and flat for gravity to do the helping. So you, Chris, can think about, you know, the table is on the floor. 
it's secure, you're on the table, that's secure. And you think about the contact that you're making. And I'm just going round, checking for any kind of pulling, tension. This is not the kind of, it's not a kind of massage tension release where you feel, ah, oh, I feel like jelly, you know, it's not a complete flop, it's a, it's a releasing of all undue muscular tension. So every now and again I'll come back to the head and I'll check what's going on. I'll check to see if maybe the books are too high or they need to come down. Like I said, some, sometimes you start with a very tall stack of books and as you relax and straighten out the books will come down, but I think you're still all right. So all you have to do, Chris, is keep thinking about your neck and your head and your spine lengthening and your back widening, shoulders on the table, pelvis, your knees pointed towards the ceiling. Hello. So then I might do something like this. So can see what your arms are doing. Very gently, so Chris has made me aware that he's got a current finger injury. Your teacher will know by now if you've got anything that needs careful consideration. It's not that we can fix specific things that have gone on with specific injuries, but just, you know, if you don't want us grappling with them. So I'm going to be very careful of these two fingers, but maybe I might like to change my grip slightly. So the fingers are out. I've got you by the elbow. Let's see if by connecting the arm back in, it might want to turn. Very good. It's extraordinarily difficult to let go of hands sometimes and arms because they do all the work. And what you think might be relaxed and letting go might take, you know, several several of these sessions to actually do the trick. And that's okay. It's a very important thing to point out is this this isn't all gonna happen at once. <laughs> you wouldn't learn to play the piano or the violin in one lesson. This is a whole set of lessons. I'm just waiting for Chris's arm just to kind of hang elbow towards the ground. I'm going to go back and visit your head again. Chris takes a nice deep breath. That means that things are actually releasing. You know, anything, anything might happen. Your back might click. <laughs> your tummy might rumble. Other noises may occur. That's all good. We've heard it all. You might feel deep emotional releases. We can't tell what is bolted into your body. But the idea is that you're in a safe place. So let's see what's happening with the shoulder blade. I'm gonna put my, so anything that we do
try and let us do it. <laughs> Teachers know how to move things, legs and arms and shoulder blades. You don't have to help. This is your chance to be selfish. There you go, shoulder blade onto the table. We might move a leg. If you're on your own, you can do this on the floor. Might, depending on what non-slip matting you have, just let the knee flop out to one side. And let the foot slide across the ground. Take one leg out at a time, because again, you don't want the pelvis to tip this way so that the back tips up. What we're looking for is the back to be flat laid nicely along the table and this leg to stream outwards We might then go to an opposite part, for instance, if his right leg is out, I might go to the left shoulder and see. See what's going on. This is, a, this is an important point when pupils try and help to try and put their legs back. So Chris is good at this because he knows what's going to happen. So your job, Chris, is to just let me take your leg. You do not try and help. So I might pause with it up here somewhere, feed the weight of the upper leg into your hip. and put the foot down wherever it's going to land. Very good. That's taken a lot of work, uh -huh. hasn't it, Chris? Yeah. <laughs> so you see a little bit of a flop going on here now because your leg has released itself. Try and find a neutral zone. Doesn't feel like you're holding on too much. So yeah, like I say, it's not a, it's not a complete letting go. You have to do some work with your legs, don't you? Some, That's yeah, fine. like an active tone. So I'm just going to pull this leg out. Put my hand under Chris's lower back. It's really nicely flat now against the table. But the muscle that feeds the leg starts from the lower back. Just letting it lengthen. Again, Chris is not doing anything except just try and let go of any niggles of tension that he's finding in there. Just say it's okay to let go. This might not happen all at once. Take several sessions. That's absolutely okay. So there's space in your ankles. This band that holds your foot together, that can let go as well.
So you see at no point am I actually massaging anything or pressing anything, it's just more like a guiding exploration. I'm expecting Chris to pay attention to what's going on, mostly to his head and neck. Again, the opposite sides. This will all vary, but you know, you can check in at different points around the place just to make sure that everything is letting go as it should. Okay, put this foot back again. Chris is not going to help me. That's the inhibition part. foot and the heel is coming up to his weight into his hip and then just put the foot down wherever it's going to land. Again looking for a place where the knees are kind of self-supporting but not rigid, pointing towards the ceiling. Feels about right. Does that feel about right Chris? That's about right. Okay. So usually in a lesson that would take about 15 minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes. Try not to fall asleep, but if you do, then there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> if you do fall asleep, it's not, you know, it's not the world's worst thing. It obviously has to happen. But what, what we want to aim for is an awareness of what's going on. The table in a lesson is for my benefit, it's for the teacher's benefit. It means we don't have to crawl around on the floor in a deep squat. It's just easier for us to work with. But at home you're unlikely to have a table. Um, even though you can use the dining table if you want. That's a known thing, to put some padding down. Whatever you want to do. So what we have to do to get off the table, first of all, Chris is going to have to shift his bottom to the right. So if you're going to get off this side, obviously you want to make room on the right. So if you just gently try not to undo any work, what we want to avoid is lurching off the table. People go, oh, thanks very much. And then they lurch off the table and then undo all the good work that we've done. So, yep. So your eyes will go travel across the ceiling and down there down the wall. At the same time your knees will come over and this arm will come over. So now you're on your side. You push yourself up with this arm. Let your legs flop down onto the ground. And take a moment for the contents to settle. Yeah. You might get a head rush, you might feel dizzy. You might notice that you were three inches taller than when you lay down. <laughs> All these things need a moment, especially if your blood pressure is not where it should be. Take a moment, just remember where you are. Then when you're ready, just push yourself with your hands gently onto the floor. We've just adjusted the camera because our heads were chopped off the top. But now you're standing on the floor, Chris, you've got the mem recent memory of the table against your back. Your back is not going to be as flat as it was on the table. Mm -hmm. You've got that slight curve coming back in, which goes in here, up there, up to your head. But remember where your feet are and the top of your head is. Yes. And your hips, remember, have mm -hmm. the potential to go back. Your knees have the potential to go forward. And there you are. So if you were just to come forward and your right foot will go. And there you are. Walk into the camera. <laughs>